Welcome to the seventh and final part of the presentation series, Introduction to Sampling for Mineral Processing. In this video, we will look at the effects of sampling errors on recovery and net smelter return, which will include on-stream analyzer and sampling errors, grade and recovery targets, error propagation and calculations for recovery and net smelter returns. This is a quick review of the detrimental effects to operations of incorrect results. The assays from samples produced by samplers are used for process control. This includes grade and recoveries where the recovery is a derived result from a combination of assay results. Target values for these are set or adjusted and accurate, non-biased assay results are required to achieve this. In the previous video, we looked at problems with samplers which do not adhere to the sampling theory. This is just a quick review. Launder and pressure samplers contain a bias or errors which can be constant or fluctuating. The ratio of fines to coarse or light to heavy particles entering the fixed cutter or nozzle will vary even without fluctuations in the process. Segregation by particle size, density, etc. is always present as there is no guarantee that the slurry to be sampled is homogeneous. Segregation is caused by pipe bends or intersections before the sampler. Unfortunately, these errors change over time due to fluctuation in feed tonnages, particle size, density, flow rates, pressures, etc., which can cause precision errors. On-stream analyzers only analyze the samples which are presented to them. The one standard deviation measurement errors of analyzers are a combination of the sampling error and the analytical error of the instrument. The measurement error can be determined by summing the square of these errors and then taking the square root of the sum. It should be noted here that this sampling error is the fluctuating bias or the precision error. Also, in addition to this, if the sample fed to the OSA has a constant or systematic bias, the results will also include this bias. Here is an error propagation calculator which is freely available. In the equation window is a simple recovery formula and the assays are shown in the value fields. The error fields contain the one standard deviation error of the combined sampling and OSA analytical error. The compute button will then calculate the recovery and the total one standard deviation error in the calculation. Here we compare sampling precision errors of 1.5% and 1%. There is a slight difference of 0.0184 in the standard deviation value. In the Wills Mineral Processing Technology book, this statement can be found. The aim of a flotation control system should be to improve the metallurgical efficiency, i.e. to produce the best possible grade recovery curve and to stabilize the process at the concentrate grade which will produce the most economic return from the throughput. This statement has a few key points. A concentrate grade is decided upon. This could be by a planner, a metallurgist, the control system, or other, and depends on the feed grade. You need to keep the process stable as upsets are not good. You should increase the recovery as close as possible to the best grade recovery curve without destabilizing or upsetting the circuit. In short, maximize the recovery at a target grade. Here are shown two charts. The top one shows the grade recovery curves. The yellow spot in the middle is the analyzer's measurement result, and the yellow ellipse around it is the one standard deviation error. The additional red and blue points are errors from a Monte Carlo simulation. The bottom chart is a close-up of the two one standard deviation error ellipses, comparing sampling precision errors of 1.5 and 1%. The top of the ellipses have been aligned. The idea here is that the recovery target can be moved upwards by 0.0184%, the one standard deviation difference, and the probability of detecting when the process exceeds the one standard deviation point will be the same in both cases while improving the recovery. As the target grade or recovery changes due to feed changes, this error difference also changes, but only slightly. One other point is that the calculated area of the grade recovery eclipse changes with the one standard deviation errors. In this example, the inner or red ellipse is smaller, resulting in a 7.1% improvement in the control point's uncertainty. Here is a short introduction to statistical process control, or SPC. As stated by Connell, 
All control starts with the measurement and the quality of control can be no better than the quality of the measurement input. SPC uses control charts and rules. The upper and lower control limits, UCL and LCL, are related to the one standard deviation errors and the control set point is the X bar. These are the basics. Rule number one. If the last measurement result is more than three standard deviations from the set point, then the process has a high probability that it is heading in that direction. Rule number two. If the last two out of three measurement results are more than two standard deviations from the set point, then the process has a high probability that it's heading in that direction. Rule number three. If the last four out of five measurement results are more than one standard deviation from the set point, then the process also has a high probability that it's heading in that direction. Rule number four. If the last nine measurement results fall on the same side of the set point, then the process has a high probability that it is heading in that direction. The upper and lower control limits for grade and recovery depend on the combined precision errors of the analyzer and the samplers. This slide is a continuation from the previous slide comparing the two one standard deviation precision errors and moving the set points upwards so that the one standard deviation precision error falls at the same level. Again, the probability of detecting when the process exceeds the one standard deviation point will be the same in both cases. However, you will notice that the plus two standard deviation and the minus one and minus two standard deviation lines for case two are closer to the target set point. This means that the probability of detecting when the process exceeds these points will occur sooner, allowing for tighter control around the set point. This also applies to the plus and minus three standard deviations and beyond. Error propagation can be extended through to the net smelter return or NSR calculations. Here is shown a program designed to estimate the net smelter return improvements possible based on two different errors. The sampling precision errors of the previous slide of 1.5% and 1% are used. The feed, concentrate and tails assays are inserted along with the net smelter return parameters, metal price, smelter payments, treatment and transport costs and the total concentrator's production. This then calculates the net smelter returns one standard deviation errors. In this case, there's a slight difference of about $0.218 per ton in the one standard deviation error level. Again, here we show two charts. The top one shows the grade versus net smelter return curves. The yellow spot in the middle is the analyzer result and the yellow ellipse around it is the one standard deviation error. The additional red and blue points are from a Monte Carlo simulation. The bottom chart is a close-up of the two one standard deviation error ellipses comparing sampling precision errors of 1.5 and 1%. Again, the top of the ellipses have been aligned. The idea here is that the net smelter return target can be moved upwards $0.2188 per ton, the one standard deviation difference, and the probability of detecting when the process exceeds the one standard deviation point will be the same in both cases while improving the net smelter return. Again, one other point is that the calculated area of the grade net smelter return ellipse changes with the different one standard deviation errors. In this case, the inner or red ellipse is smaller, resulting in a 7.9% improvement in the control point uncertainty. With an increase in the one standard deviation difference to the set point and a 2.1 million tons per year of production, the better precision samplers will result in a net smelter return improvement of $460,000 per year. Using statistics, you can get an idea of how far away from the grade recovery curve or point your plant normally operates. When the process crosses this point, there will be a fairly quick and noticeable change or upset from the recovery or the concentrate grade set point. An OSA has a cycle time of about 15 minutes, which is approximately 100 measurements per day. Based on the amount of these upsets crossing the grade recovery curve, you can estimate how far away from this curve your plant normally runs. If you have 16 upsets per day, you operate about one standard deviation from the grade recovery curve. At five to six upsets per day, it's about one and a half standard deviations. At two to four upsets per day, it's about two standard deviations. And if it's once every several days, it's about three standard deviations. 
This gives you an idea of how many standard deviations, differences, you can increase your recovery or net smelter return set point. So, if you have two to four upsets per day, you can likely increase the set point two times the one standard deviation difference. This is another example of a high tonnage, low grade copper mine, comparing sampling precision errors of 2% and 1%. Based on the assays and sampling precision errors and the net smelter return parameters, a better sampling system could increase the net smelter return $0.045 per tonne or $2.2 million per year. This is when you increase the set point the one standard deviation difference. By using the method from the previous slide, you may be able to double these values by increasing the set point twice the one standard deviation difference. Also, the area of the ellipse, or the current operating condition uncertainty, will be reduced by 15% for the recovery and 17% for the net smelter return. This is the same example as the previous slide, only comparing sampling precision errors of 3% and 1%. In this case, the better sampling system would increase the net smelter return by $0.115 per tonne, or $5.6 million per year, at an increase in the set point of one standard deviation difference. Again, these values can be doubled if you are able to increase the set point by twice the one standard deviation difference. Also, the area of the ellipse, or the current operating condition uncertainty, will be reduced by 31% for the recovery and 35% for the net smelter return. This completes the effect on recovery and net smelter return section and the introduction to sampling presentations. We here at Heath and Sherwood hope you found these presentations useful and informative, and if you require more information, you can contact us directly.